Hi kids, it's Mrs. Free. How are you? Good, me too. Today we're going to talk about uh, the lesson two in our unit four on biodiversity and conservation. So this is going to be the conservation part of biodiversity and uh, what happens when we lose biodiversity and why are we losing biodiversity? How is it lost? So a couple of background things. So let's talk about what extinction is. First of all, extinction technically is the death of a species. Well, the end. Uh, that means that there are no reproducing individual members of a species left on Earth. Um, and that can that can happen on a global scale. That can happen also on a local scale. And we call the local events extirpation. What that means is a species is no longer found in a local uh, population um, or a local community. It might be um, still extant or alive in other parts of the world in its natural habitat, but it might be gone from a certain place. So that's extirpation. By the way, you should be taking notes. You should be writing down all of the underlined things and anything else that you think you should remember. Okay, go ahead and get some paper. I forget to tell you straight up because I always figure you're a good student that's on top of that. Of course you are, right? You already had paper. Okay, let's continue. So extirpation, local extinction. Um, there is a natural extinction rate. Extinction is a natural event. Things go extinct all the time and always have. Plants and animals and other organisms, uh, if, if they simply cannot adapt to any environmental change or if they are outcompeted by other organisms in their environment that occupy, occupy the same niche or use the same limited resources that they do. If they can't survive, they don't reproduce and that means the end of a species. That can happen slowly. It can also happen rather suddenly. Natural extinction rates, it's estimated that about 0.1 to 1 species per million species disappear per year. Uh, that, and again, that's a natural rate. Things change. The earth changes. Um, habitats change. Local climate weather changes. Um, resources come and go. Uh, if a plant goes extinct for some reason, we might see the natural following of the extinction of its consumers and up the food chain if there's not uh, if there aren't good alternatives to those food sources. If we have a smaller food web, we might see kind of a cascade through there. Um, so naturally, again, we get about, if, if we estimate that there are 10 million species on the planet, right, and we've named about 3 million of those, uh, if there are 10 million species on the planet, that means naturally about 10 of them will go extinct per year, give or take. Okay. But there have been periods of mass extinction. So we've documented quite a few. There are five big mass extinction events that have happened since life first arose on the planet, which was about 3.8 billion years ago. Um, so I'm going to go through these really quickly. You don't necessarily need to know these, um, although they're, they're interesting. Oh, I'm on the picture. There we go. So a mass extinction is a widespread, right, widespread, I can talk, this is fine, widespread or global sharp decrease in biodiversity. That's the definition. And it's usually caused by a sudden catastrophic event or relatively quick climate change event. And that is what you're going to notice in each of these as I outline them is the words climate change, because that is the biggest influence on how an organism survives. It's a biotic environment. If that changes and it can't change with it, we're going to see death and extinction. So the big five, the five biggest mass extinction events are these. There was an Ordovician event that happened 444 million years ago, ish, um, in which 85% of all life on Earth disappeared. And by disappeared, let's be real. So these events don't happen overnight. Usually this extinction uh, on a mass extinction takes anywhere from a few thousand years to a million years to see um, the event unfold and finalize and then new organisms, new species um, evolve from what is remaining. Okay, so it's not overnight, but we see a massive change in the fossil record. That's how we track these. Okay, and we, in the geological record, in the rocks themselves, we can see the chemistry of the atmosphere and the oceans and what it was doing um, at that time. Okay, geologists are smart people with the chemicals in the rocks. Okay, so Ordovician, 
that was caused by climate change. They're pretty sure this was when the Earth went, underwent a major tectonic plate conversion where the continents started to drift apart. And that's the result of major earthquake and volcanism. And when a volcano goes off, it releases mass amounts of methane and carbon into the atmosphere. And if we get that on a wide scale, a lot of like thousands of volcanoes erupting at the same time, which they think is what happened, you'll get a climate change event like the the atmosphere warms up, uh, the ocean might become more acidic. Okay, uh, so that happened in the Ordovician. Then the Devonian event was 360 million years ago, and we saw about 80% of the life that was left over from the Ordovician that had started to evolve again. <coughs> bye bye, you're gone again. Okay. And this was actually caused by plants colonizing the land. Before the Devonian, plants were, uh, everything was pretty much um, marine in the ocean, in the waters. And then we start to see life move onto terrestrial environments, onto the continents and onto the land. And the plants started sucking up all of the carbon dioxide in the air, and that caused climate change in a colder direction and uh, that caused a drop in temperature caused ice ages and so that that caused a lot of um, organisms to go extinct that couldn't tolerate those new abiotic parameters then we get the permian 96 percent of all living things dead gone done that was 250 million years ago most of life on the planet disappeared. Uh, we, and we're not sure why. Scientists aren't 100% sure on this. They do see some chemistry changes in the rocks that point to climate change caused by uh, possibly, I think the hypothesis is it was a unlucky combination of a volcanic event, mass up vol volcanism, as well as asteroid and meteor impacts all over the planet. Um, methane was released. It, kind of became a mess of climate change then. And so then life started again. So only 4% of living things survived that. Life started again. And this is when we get the dinosaurs. Woohoo, dinosaurs! And uh, then uh, there was a Triassic event just 50 million years later, the, the 200 million years ago, half of the planet was gone. This was uh, major volcanic activity, um, which caused acidification in the ocean. So we lost a lot of ocean organisms at that time. And then some um, of the families of dinosaurs also went extinct. The ones that were left continued on. And then there was the big Cretaceous or KT boundary event that we all know about because that's when the dinosaurs went extinct, right? 65 million years ago, but it wasn't just dinosaurs. It was 75% of everything, all living things, gone. Plants, dinosaurs, uh, brand new mammals, um, everything. And uh, that was it, right? And that was when we start to see the modern biodiversity that we have. After the KT event, we see the um, the rise of the mammals. Mammals existed when dinosaurs were here. Mammals were small, little forest-dwelling therapsids that uh, just avoided getting eaten by dinosaurs because they lived underground and they lived in the forest. And uh, they were small enough to not be as impacted by the climate change caused by the asteroid impact that caused the Cretaceous event. Same with small dinosaurs. Um, those, those survived and we now call them birds. Okay. After each event, life continues. Life finds a way. Evolution is amazing, and we get new biodiversity every time. Okay. So here's some of the, the major animals, and, and sorry, I left out plants because I'm the zoology teacher. But we saw all kinds of really cool things in the fossil record that just stop existing in the fossil record at these mass extinction boundaries. So this is a sawjaw. I think it's a sawjawed shark. I don't remember its name but it's cool. We lose trilobites, which were one of the major uh, major life forms on the planet for a very long time. Trilobites were like the dinosaurs before the Devonian event. Um, they were massive. And then we get, oh, got away, sorry. Ooh, there we go. And then we get a whole bunch of land animals that went extinct in the Permian. Um, the Triassic, we get those large dinosaurs, a couple groups of dinosaurs and dinosaur relatives go extinct. And then that KT screaming asteroid coming in and destroying all non-avian um, and large dinosaurs. Okay. All right. And some new life form 
took would step in to replace the major life forms that went extinct at the time. The Devonian was actually um, a big time for fish, a lot of large fish. It was the age of the fish. And when they went extinct, uh, reptiles and amphibians stepped in. And then when they went extinct, then we get the dinosaurs stepping in. And then when the dinosaurs went extinct, we get mammals and birds. Okay? Life continues. Okay. So what's going on right now? It's hypothesized we are right now in the middle of the sixth mass extinction event of the Earth, and this one is different because this one is being driven anthropogenically. You need to know that word, anthropogenic. Anthropogenic, anthro, the word part anthro means human. Genic means caused or start. So anthropogenic is extinction caused by human activities, and we're seeing this all over the planet right now. Currently, so remember that background rate of one species per 1 million per year, so maybe 10 per year per 10 million species? We're currently losing 30,000 species a year. Plants, animals, bacteria, um, fungi disappearing every year. And this has been happening um, this has been happening for about the last 10,000 years. It accelerated exponentially in the last 200 years when humans really began colonizing all continents of the planet on an industrial scale and the industrial revolution started. Okay, if you've taken history, you'll learn about that. Okay. So right now we get uh, 1,000 times the natural background rate of extinction and it is projected that we will lose 30 to 50 percent of all living species on the planet in the next 30 years. So by the year 2050, we'll have half the biodiversity we have now. And you guys, you know, the movie we watched last week uh, with Sir David Attenborough, he touched on that, right? All right, so here's, uh, here's some of the uh, major things that we've lost that were anthropogenically driven. Um, this is a nice little example. So we had a dodo. These are giant pigeons that they had no natural predators. So humans just were able to walk up and wipe them out. They lived in a planet on an island. Um, this is a mambo. I think that's a Hawaiian bird. The passenger pigeon. So this was a North American species. Passenger pigeons used to number in the billions. There were flocks of passenger pigeons in North America that if they flew over, they would black out the sun for hours if you were standing in one place. And humans hunted them to extinction in the early 1900s. All gone, there are no more. And then um, the Tasmanian wolf, this is a marsupial wolf. It's really cool. Uh, it's got a pouch like a kangaroo, but it was a predator. And um, it's also called the thylacine, um, only found in Southern Australia and in Tasmania. And yeah, they're gone. There's rumors that people see them, but no one's ever substantiated it, okay? Um, just for some more, there are also plants going extinct. Almost every state, yeah, it looks like every almost every state in America has an endangered plant. And endangered means a species is pretty close to being extinct, okay? There are different grades of it. For more information, take my zoology class next year. But if, there are plant species that are tipping over into extinction rates as well, okay? Um, these are some of the most um, endangered North American animals right now. Um, this was the last male northern white rhino. His name was Sudan and he died in 2018. Um, he was kept in captivity because black, or I'm sorry, white rhinos have gone extinct due to poaching, hunting. Uh, there are two females left, but Females can't reproduce, right? So they are functionally extinct as a species. And then um, my favorite, the vaquita. They're the cutest porpoise in the world. They're three feet long and there's 10 of them left, we think. 10, and it's human cost. And then we get plants too. This is an endangered tree in Africa. Look how amazingly beautiful those are. And um, this is a cork tree. We kill cork trees. They're not doing well. So I could, I could add like layer upon layer upon layer of endangered and extinct animals um, at this point that it's, they're directly attributed to human, uh, human caused extinction. Oh good, the sun's gone away, blinded me, man. Okay. So how is this happening? And oh my goodness, 
how do we stop it? Do we stop it? You guys saw the the hypotheses about the um, the result that will come of biodiversity uh, if you watched the movie uh, A Life on Our Planet and saw that. Um, so what's causing all of this to happen? Anthropogenic threats to modern biodiversity include these. Overexploitation, habitat loss and destruction, habitat fragmentation, climate change caused by humans burning of fossil fuels. Yes, I'm gonna hammer on that. Um, pollution and invasive species. Okay, so what do those mean? I would like you to find out. Okay. If you are working at home, if you are not in class for this week, what I would like you to do is choose one of those threats. And um, on Canvas, there is uh, the there are these directions to do the assignment, um, but you will not be working in a group. You'll be working on your own, sorry, unless you can find someone else who's working at home and has the same assignment. You guys can work together, that's fine. Um, what you're gonna do is choose the factor and then you're going to define it and list its causes. I would like you to find and describe at least two organisms that have been affected. One plant, one animal, two animals, one plant, a bacterium, whatever. Um, they have either had gone extinct due to that cause or are currently threatened by one of, by that cause. You're going to research current solutions. What are we trying to do? What's been figured out? Has anything been figured out? What are we trying to do? And also, I want you to uh, be a smarty pants. Figure out a new solution, a practical, actual solution that could be put into place for real, like not, we could stop hunting them. Sure, you betcha, give me more. How do we stop this, okay? So I want you to build a Google slide presentation, five slide minimum, I want pictures, I want good explanations, and I'm not kidding about the brainstorming new solutions. Think about it, research what's been done, see if you can come up with any flaws in those problem, in those solutions, See if you can come up with something else. What else could we do? Okay? All right. Let's do um, Monday. We'll find out this week. Don't forget to take your quiz on Friday. Um, it's actually a test for this unit, so make sure you get that done as well. Contact me if you need any help. Have a beautiful week. Have a gorgeous day. Be good. Be safe. Be kind. Wear your masks. Stay away from each other. My goodness, keep a thylacine between you two. Have a good day.